This lecture is about the math and science of solar power. Solar power is a renewable resource, which together with wind power makes up just 2% of the global energy distribution as of 2015. But solar is predicted to expand quite a lot in the next 10 years because panels are getting cheaper and cheaper all the time. These are the basic facts about solar power. It's pretty simple. It uses radiant energy from the sun to generate electricity, and there are two types of solar power. Thermal solar power plants transform the radiant energy of the sun into heat energy, which heats water, spins turbines, and generates electricity. And in comparison to that, the solar panel that you probably think of when you think of solar power is a photovoltaic panel. These transform the radiant energy of the sun directly into electrical energy. These are pictures and definitions of both. You can see that in a thermal solar power plant, radiant energy from the sun is bounced off of mirrors arranged to shine on a single point. So you can see at the top of that tower, there's a very bright point where all those mirrors are aiming the sun to shine. This area becomes extremely hot and heats water, which is turned into steam, which spins a turbine, which spins a generator, which creates electricity. The energy changes from radiant to thermal to kinetic to electrical energy in a thermal solar power plant. In comparison, a photovoltaic solar panel uses a special material to change radiant energy from the sun directly into electrical energy with no extra steps. The name photovoltaic means light to voltage or light to electrical energy. A photovoltaic panel specifically takes advantage of the photoelectric effect, which is the emission of electrons from a material when light hits the material. The free electrons exist as electricity. So these generate electricity because when light from the sun hits them, the material releases some of its electrons as free energy to use. These are the advantages and disadvantages of solar power in general and the two types of solar power in particular. I'm not going to list through all of them, but you should copy down the basics in your notes. Doing math with solar power usually involves the photovoltaic panels specifically. To understand the math, you're going to have to understand the idea of intensity, which is the power delivered to a specific area, and it's measured in power over area. The unit is watts per meter squared. So in this unit, we'll only focus on the intensity of the sun's light. As an example, if I say that sunlight impacts a solar panel with an intensity of 240 watts per meter squared, that means that every square meter of the panel is experiencing 240 watts of radiant power being delivered to it. That's 240 joules of radiant energy being delivered to every square meter of the panel every second. This is actually a pretty common intensity of the sun at the surface of the Earth. And intensity is actually a vector. The only part of the vector that delivers power to a surface is the part that is normal at a 90 degree angle to the surface. As an example, the intensity on the left there, 200 watts per meter, because that's hitting the surface at an exact 90 degree angle to the surface, it's normal to the surface. And so all of that intensity is being experienced by the surface. There's no angle between the intensity and the normal line to the surface, the 90 degree line to the surface. So we would say that this intensity is delivering the full 200 watts per meter squared to the surface. However, the intensity on the right is impacting the surface at a 30 degree angle to the normal. So to find the part, the component of that vector that's perfectly parallel to the normal, we have to use cosine because that would be the adjacent side of a right triangle. So if that's 200 watts, 200 times cosine of 30 is equal to 173.2 watts per meter squared. So that means the intensity delivered to this surface is only 173.2 watts per meter squared. So that's going to be important in problem solving. This actually also comes up in the design of solar panels at different points on the Earth because the light from the sun impacts the Earth at different angles at different points on the Earth. You can see why with this animation. So if we were to just build solar panels flat on the ground at every surface of the Earth, the same solar panels at different locations along the Earth would experience different amounts of intensity from the sun because they're at different angles to that intensity. This is why at different parts of the world we do not build solar panels just flat on the ground. We angle them up at a certain amount, and the closer you are to the poles of the Earth, the more you will have to angle the solar panels to get them to be at a perfect 90 degree angle to the rays of the sun. You can actually prove using geometry that the best angle for a solar panel is the exact angle between a line drawn from the panel's point on the Earth to the center of the Earth and the equator. So that's pretty cool. The farther north from the equator you go, the more you will need to angle solar panels up to get a perfect 90 degree angle with the sun. If you were looking for another reason why we know that the Earth is round, this is another reason. Because Earth's tilt in comparison to the sun changes as the seasons change, solar panels have to be tilted at different angles in the summer versus the winter to get the most power. So the thing that causes the seasons is the Earth's tilt. So the intensity of the sun is affected by the tilt of the Earth and the angle that the sun's rays of intensity hit different parts of the Earth. 
Here's a quick example problem to close the video. Sunlight with intensity of 240 watts per meter squared impacts a 15% efficient solar panel at 10 degrees from the normal. If the solar panel needs to generate 766 kilojoules every hour, what size does the panel need to be? I'm going to start by working out how much intensity we can actually get out of the solar panel given its efficiency and its angle. So this is 240 watts per meter squared, but it's impacting at an angle of 10 degrees from the normal, so I have to take cosine of 10 and multiply that by the intensity, and it's 15% efficient, so I have to multiply the power going in by 0.15. So that means that the energy that we get out of this, or the power that we get out based on the intensity, is actually only 35.5 watts per meter squared. Because we're working with joules at a time, I'm going to convert that from watts to joules per second. So when I do that, I get 35.5 joules per second meter squared. And now because this question is asking about hours, I'm going to convert this into joules per hours times meters squared. So multiplying this by 60 seconds over one minute to cancel out the seconds, and then 60 minutes over one hour, canceling those things out, gets me 128,000 joules per hour meter squared. That basically means that you're getting 128,000 joules for every hour that you run this and for every meter squared that it is. So finally, to figure out how much area we need, I know that this is the intensity that we're getting out of the solar panel, and that multiplied by the area of the panel is going to equal how much energy we get out of it. One way to think about this is to see that the intensity has meters squared in the denominator, and our final answer of energy per hour does not have meters squared in the denominator. So that means we're going to have to multiply it by something that has meters squared in the numerator and nothing else, and that is a measurement of area. Anything that's measured in meters squared is an area. So dividing this out and solving for the area by itself gets me 6 meters squared. So if we have this much sunlight coming in with this angle and this much efficiency, and we want to get this much energy out in an hour, it's going to take about 6 meters squared of solar panel to get that much energy.